Well, I'm starting a new project. Um, I've decided to make some back saws, and I've been playing around with retoothing some existing saws and uh, making some blades and other such things. And I thought I'd go ahead and document uh, how I'm going to attempt to make this uh, dovetail saw, and we'll get started. I ordered the uh, saw plate from McMaster Car. It's just 1095 uh, shim stock. Um, and this is the, the label of it. Now this that I'm using here is uh, there we go, 20 thousandths. Um, I bought a 6 by 25 plate because for 10 inch long saws that are less than 3 inches high I can get at least 4 saws out of this. I've set up to uh, go ahead and, and cut out a blade from my steel and what I'll be using is essentially a generic Dremel tool and I took the collar off of it and slipped a piece of uh, aluminum, just a scrap piece that I had, over that to use as a guide. And this worked pretty well the first time I used it, so I'm going to stick with it. I don't like to use tin snips to cut this because you put too much uh, stress into it and it's hard to straighten and, and uh, this way I'll have a nice clean line. I've put down a little strip of plywood edge here and got it clamped down. Uh, so I know the distance from the back of my aluminum guide to the inside of my cutting wheel and I've measured from the fence to where I want to cut and if I just hook this aluminum on this fence I can just follow it along and get a pretty clean pretty straight edge and then I'll just go back along and clean that straighten it with a file this will be the under the uh, the back of the saw the tooth line will be the opposite edge uh, I'm cutting this 10 inches long. It's 2 and an eighth at the toe and 2 and 3 eighths at the heel. Uh, it'll give me 3 sixteenths cant on the saw plate. stop and let it cool for just a second. It's just barely hot, but uh, rather than keep building heat, I'll let that cool down just a little bit. Uh, if you take light passes, it really doesn't heat up the plate hardly at all. I took a couple of heavier passes there, and the heat dissipates out into the plate pretty quickly. So I can start again and, and finish this up. I've just got a block of wood that I've put a saw kerf in to act as a joiner. I just it fits nice and snug on my inch smooth file and I'll just use that to make sure I'm putting a straight back on this. Okay, so the plate is pretty much ready to go. My tooth line will be down here, the factory edge of the steel, and my toe and my heel. I'll use this uh, homemade steel back. This one was made from a piece of uh, three-quarter angle that I bought at uh, Lowe's. And I took it to work and in one of the woodworking vices in the shop. Uh, I took it from a 90 degree angle till it was pretty much pinched close. Um, at that point it was bowed and bent and, and quite a mess. Uh, I came home and put it on a piece of railroad iron, railroad iron that I used for an anvil and used a dead blow hammer to straighten it, which worked pretty well. It took a little time. You can see on the end here where it's folded, it's a little, the bend radius at the top leaves it a little bit thicker at the top than at the bottom. Uh, on a Jackson saw that I have, with the blade in it, it's about 25 thousandths wider at the top than at the bottom. Uh, this one currently is about 50. When I put the blade in there, that'll get it about to 25 or 30. So it'll be comparable to a uh, uh, factory saw. And actually, the one on the Jackson's a little bit wider. This one's only about 5 eighths wide after it's bent. Uh, but since this is a small dovetail saw, I think that'll probably be fine. I should probably note that when I was making the back, after I uh, got it home 
it was quite a bit wider. The bend radius at the top wasn't pinched nearly tight enough. So what I did, I came home and I made a set of smooth jaws for my machinist vise. I used a magnet that I put across the top and I stuck the back in there with a cheater bar and worked it through and continued to uh, refine the thickness on the back until it was pretty much uh, set at 210 thousandths. Uh, this is 14 gauge steel, so it's a, that's about as tight a bend as I'm going to get on it. Um, this process worked out pretty well. It's kind of tedious. Uh, it also introduced some bend and bow back into the back, so I had to again go back to the anvil with the dead blow hammer. And the reason I used a dead blow was so I wouldn't put big dents in this that I couldn't file out. Uh, the dead blow is a plastic hammer with some lead shot in it. Uh, it gives a pretty good shot. Not as good as a steel hammer in this case, but uh, I was able to straighten it and get it all back in, in the kilter. Okay, I've uh, jointed all four edges just to get everything trued up and deburred. Uh, now I've got this bluing on here to deal with, and I thought about sanding it off, but it seems like I read somewhere that citric acid would take this off. Now I can tell you lacquer thinner don't even touch it. Tried that. Uh, so I'm just going to put it, I've just got a little bit of just a little bit of water, probably a half inch of water in here, and I don't know, I put probably a tablespoon or so of dried citric acid from the grocery store in there, and I'm just going to drop this in and let it soak and uh, see if it'll take that off. I know that citric acid will remove rust, um, so I suspect it'll probably take this blue off pretty well as well. Uh, I'll leave that in there for a little while and kind of keep an eye on it and uh, see how it does. Well, the citric acid worked. Um, I uh, put it in and I thought, oh, I'll just grab a little soft brush and help it along. By the time I walked to my toolbox, grabbed a toothbrush and walked back, there was no blue left on this thing. It was maybe 30 seconds. Um, so that was pretty, pretty good money investment there for a couple bucks for some citric acid. So just a little bit of light sanding to polish this and I think it's good to go. After it came out of the uh, citric acid, it, the bluing is pretty well gone. It has a little bit of a tarnished look to it. Uh, after some 320 grit sandpaper, uh, it shines up pretty nice. Um, I'll probably sand the other side and then put a little oil on this to make sure it doesn't try and rust on me. I went ahead and, and sanded this up to uh, 600 grit. And it's got a, a pretty decent polish on it. I think it'll be good enough. And I put a little 3-in-1 oil on here and I just need to smear it around make sure I got a good thin coat all over everything so it doesn't start to rust before I get started here. I was a little disappointed in the surface finish of the material I've got here. There are some small striations on one side, you probably can't see them on the camera, but they won't quite sand out. And they're, it's part of the milling process I'm sure, but uh, it's not quite as slick a finish as I had hoped. It's, it's still nice, but and it probably won't be that noticeable once you get the saw together, but I just thought that the, the surface would be better. On the other side, it's it's really not too bad, but it's a little worse on this on this back side. So there we've got oil on everything, and I'll set that aside and go on to the next step. I used my rotary tool to bevel the back top of the blade where it fits into the tote. This is the first test fit of the back onto the saw plate. I left it full length here, but would later mark it and uh, cut it to length and, and round the nose of it so it would look a little bit better. Okay, that wraps up uh, part one of the dovetail saw. In part two, we'll concentrate on building the uh, tote or the handle. And in part three, we'll uh, tooth the blade and sharpen it. So be sure and check the description below for links, and uh, until next time, thanks for watching.